Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to go through the different stages I took to take this portrait to this finished retouched image. I'm not going to be going through the retouch as a step-by-step -step process, me actually going through and doing all the edits, but what we'll be doing is sharing with you the different layers that I've created and my process of finishing off the picture. So right now we've got the image open. We've got two instances of the same image open. We've got one on the right which is showing a close-up and then we've got the full-size image here just so you can see both sides at the same time. The first thing I did was some liquefying and that included liquefying the flat spot in the head, adjusting the shoulders a little bit, bringing in the neck and a few others. I'll show you again the before and the after. The before and the after. So it wasn't a major change, but it's these little things I feel that obviously add to the overall success of the image. The next thing I did was a cleanup layer. And you'll notice on the zoomed in version here on the right side, that is just simply getting rid of all of the spots, imperfections, and other blemishes using only the spot healing brush. And that is all I did. I just worked with the spot healing brush tool until I got rid of all of those imperfections. The next thing I did, and I want you to pay a little bit of attention to the neck area here, where it is a little bit yellow, was to fix that by adding a color correction layer. And if I open up that group, that is simply a blank layer set to color. And then I have used a brush, which I have sampled a neutral color of the skin and then I've painted that onto the image, okay? And what that will do is it will change the color of the image, but not affect the luminosity. It won't affect the lightness or the darkness. It will retain the shadows and the highlights, but it will just adjust the color. So that was the next stage. After that, I went into dodging and burning. And this took probably the longest part of the retouch. Approximately an hour I spent dodging and burning the image. And this was done at a pixel level using two curves adjustment layers. A lighten curves adjustment and a darken. If I was to just show you the mask, you'll see here, this is all of the marks, all of the dodging I did using fat, wide, soft brushes and smaller, narrower brushes all over the face. And this is the burn layer right here. This is where I've darkened and added a little bit more depth to the image. So when we turn this on and off, you'll see how it brings a little bit more form and a little bit more three dimensionality to the face. The next thing is I worked with the color. And if I open up this, I'll go through the different color elements that we worked with. The first thing I did with color was I wanted to whiten the teeth because at that point, the teeth had a little bit of discoloration. Nothing major, she's got pretty good teeth to start with. So we whitened the teeth and that was done by simply using a color balance layer in which we've taken the yellows out by adding in some blue. The highlights and the shadows were not touched. This was all mid-tone, plus seven on the blues. I then brightened the teeth by simply adding a curves layer and then masking in the teeth. And you can see the before and the after there. The next thing was I brightened the iris on both eyes, the colored parts of the eye. And that was done in a very subtle way, nothing extreme. These are the marks that were made on the iris. The next thing I did was a selective color adjustment layer. And I'll turn this on and off a couple of times just so you can see what's happening. If we actually open this up, you'll see in the red channel, I pulled it down by minus 26. This just took a little bit of reds out of the image, in particular in the shadow areas. The next thing I did was I also adjusted the skin color. 
and I did that using a color balance layer. I found there was a bit too much red in the skin, so I pulled it down by minus two into the cyans. This was in the mid-tone area. Then I added plus two on the lower area here, which was adding a bit more blue. Again, neutralizing the redness in the skin. The next thing was I added a curves in order to add a little bit of contrast. And all I simply did was select linear contrast. And that gave me a nice gradual S curve. After that, I went into the grading. This was to give the image a certain look. The grade was dead easy. It simply is a curves adjustment layer in which I've worked with the red, green and blue channel. I've just played with the curves until I found something that I liked. And I actually found that initially when I'd done the color correction and the color layer, I felt like the image had turned a little bit green. So I brought a little bit of red back into the skin. Then I used a selective color adjustment layer. And this was primarily in the blacks. So if we go to the blacks, we'll see I've added minus nine on the yellow and plus seven here on the magenta. And this is just added a little bit of a, almost like a cross process look, but quite subtle. I then added a little bit of film grain because I just felt the image needed something. And then I added two more effect layers. This is using the plugin Alien Skin Exposure X2. So the first one was this creamy preset. And I'll just expand this. And it's called Exposure X2 669 Creamy Blown Highlights. And if you go into that, and we'll just bring that up right now. I'll just go through this process for you. I'll make a stamp visible without the effect. We'll go to Filter, Alien Skin, Exposure X2. We'll just let that load up. And what we are picking here is, where we are, this was it here. 669 Creamy Blown Highlights. Now you can see that effect is obviously very, very strong. But what it does do is it kind of adds a cream color into the skin. So I turned down the overall intensity right down to zero and then I brought it up gradually until I got the look that I'm after. And I think around about 20 to 23% looks good. We can see the before and the after. I think that's a little bit too strong. I'll pull it down again, maybe 11. Before, after. Let's go halfway, let's go to 15. Before, after. And then I applied that. We'll let that run through and that was it. Before and after. It's quite subtle, but it works nicely. I'll just delete that and bring up the original. That's what it was. The next thing is I added another filter on top of that. And that again was an Exposure X2 from Alien Skin. This was the Fuji Provia 100F Mild. We're going to uh, filter, Exposure X2. And if I remember, this was in the, I think it was in the color slide section. Here it is, Fuji Provia. 100F and that's at 100% so I'll bring that down and then bring that up until I get what I want and I think somewhere around 50% would look good I'll apply that and that's created that look there now again I think it's a bit strong and what I had before was a lot more subtle in fact that actual layer was set at 55% so let's turn this guy back on and bring it down to 50%. And that's a lot nicer. Yep, maybe a little bit less. Before, after. And that's quite similar to what we had here. So I'll just remove that and go back to the original. The next thing I noticed were 
Although initially it wasn't a problem, later on I started to get a little bit distracted by these loose hairs that were coming across the eye. So I just used the healing brush tool and we removed those stray hairs like so. And then I also noticed that the image could have done with a little bit more dodging and burning. And this will generally have been the next day. After I've edited the picture, I'll come back to it the next day and I'll re-look at it, re-evaluate it and see things that I missed before. And therefore there was a fair amount of dodging and burning I still felt that needed to be done. In the eyes here, the patches here and so forth. So we did another round of dodging and burning. And you can see this was the dodge layer which was quite a lot and just be mindful of the areas in which I've dodged. Turn that back on. We'll turn that off and turn that back on. And then this was the burn burning. I'll turn off the burning and you'll see there was these little white bits here and there which also needed correcting around the chin and the burn tool just harmonized all that. The final stage was to add a curves layer which just finished off by adding a little bit of contrast to the image and giving it a little bit more of a brightening effect and this was the final image in the end. So if we just go back to the beginning this was the before and this was the after. I tried to maintain a generally natural looking retouch one that didn't look overly processed. We retained the skin texture now this level of retouch does obviously take a lot longer because the dodging and burning is the long process and there is no frequency separation used in this, there's no blurring, it was purely dodging and burning from start to finish. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you'd like to see more of these kind of retouch breakdowns, looking at the different layers, let me know. I know it's not been a single step-by-step -step live retouch. That would have taken a considerable amount of time. Um, but hopefully this will still give you an insight into my process and the finished result after a good dodging and burning and a what you might class as a more of a high-end retouch method. Thanks for watching. As always, hit the like button, turn on your notifications, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.